Good morning. Yeah, it's great to see you in here. That is fantastic. And so you are all looking fantastic. And now we get to see all these different masks, right? I like it. Absolutely. So a couple announcements. Uh, thank you for joining us today, either in the sanctuary or online. Um, today we do have communion for those who are watching online from 10 to 1030. Please enter on the south entrance and drive right under the portico. Okay, so drive right under the portico and you can receive communion there. Now, we will be taking communion in worship clearly, obviously. You have your bags. Um, as far as ushers and assisting ministers go, uh, because we're not going to do the whole sign up thing, Ruth will be sending out emails and asking for ushers and assisting ministers. So if you would be so kind and willing, respond back to Ruth so that she can get a schedule set up uh, for our in-person worship. At the end of today, please wait as the ushers will dismiss you. We want to make sure that we're following all the protocols so we can continue using this fantastic space together. So allow the ushers to uh, usher you right out after service. Once the service is done, please exit uh, outside. And if you want to have a chit-chat, outside is a great place to do so. Uh, we have men's Bible study October 5th. So that's tomorrow, 830 in the community or fellowship hall there. Um, go deep cross-training. So middle school and high school, we are doing a service project tonight at 530 in the community room, we are going to be packing up baby kits, newborn kits. Uh, you can use these as service hours. You can use these just to come and have fun uh, and be together. Masks and social distancing will be followed while we put those kits together. We have a fall bazaar meeting on October 13th at 4.30. Uh, so go ahead and mark your calendars for that. And then we do have the Welcome Fall Bazaar. Uh, it is happening. Yay, it's happening. There are going to be, it's going to look a little different, right, as everything does right now, but it's going to happen. And so if you want to just take a note uh, or a minute to read what the Bazaar Committee has put in on your bulletin, okay, they're going to be following all the Minnesota Health Department COVID safety guidelines. So you have uh, tickets for the quilt, that beautiful quilt out there. And for those of you online, we're going to make sure to get a picture of that amazing quilt, and we're going to get it on Facebook so that you're able to see. But they are selling raffle tickets for that quilt. So make sure you get those uh, out. And if you have questions, I believe either CJ or Linda Fenn. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, 
and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. When God decided to free the Hebrews from slavery in Egypt, God did not do so quietly. God rained fire and death upon Egypt, passionately claiming God's people as God's own. Please stand. When disaster comes, we will not be destroyed. When danger looms, we will not be afraid. For we belong to God. Who has he has called, called us and claimed us. We confess our sins before God and one another. God of all ages, you, you have, have chosen, chosen us, us as, as your own. own. Yet we so often live as if it were not so. We succumb to things which are not good for us. We believe we know better than you. We refuse to put our trust in your promises. Sweep away our foolishness and bring us back into a trusting relationship with you. Dear people, hear the joyful words that God has forgiven us. Our misdeeds and folly are forgotten. Grace and mercy abound. Let us give thanks that we have a compassionate creator. Amen. What feast of love is offered here? What the key, the bread come down from heaven. Oh, taste and see and sing how sweet the manna given. What light of truth is offered here, what covenant from heaven, what Christ the King, the Son come down from heaven. Oh, see and hear and sing, the word of God is given. What wine of love is offered here, what holds and drink from heaven. Christ the King, the sweetest light of heaven. Oh, taste and see and sing, the Son of God is given. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Let us pray. God of might, You protected and guided your chosen people out of danger into new life. So lead us into the places where we can live and grow as your faithful people. For the sake of Jesus. Amen. Our first reading is from Exodus chapters 12 and 13. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the tenth of this month, 
They are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join its closest neighbor in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided in proportion to the number of people who eat of it. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a year old male. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of this month. Then the whole assembled congregation of Israel shall slaughter it at twilight. They shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and the lintel of the houses in which they eat it. They shall eat the lamb that same night. They shall eat it roasted over the fire with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled in water, but roast it over the fire with its head, legs, and inner organs. You shall let none of it remain until the morning. Anything that remains until the morning, you shall burn. This is how you shall eat it, your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it hurriedly. It is the Passover of the Lord, for I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, both human beings and animals. On all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. The blood shall be assigned for you on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. The Lord said to Moses, Consecrate to me all the firstborn. Whatever is the first to open the womb among the Israelites of human beings and animals is mine. Moses said to the people, Remember this day on which you came out of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, because the Lord brought you out from there by strength of hand. No leavened bread shall be eaten. Today in the month of Abib you are going out. When the Lord brings you into the land of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites, which he swore to your ancestors to give you, a land flowing with milk and honey, you shall keep this observance in this month. Seven days you shall eat unleavened bread, and on the seventh day there shall be a festival to the Lord. Unleavened bread shall be eaten for seven days. No leavened bread shall be seen in your possession and no leaven shall be seen among you in all your territory. You shall tell your child on that day, it is because of what the Lord did for me when I came out of Egypt. Here ends the reading. You may stand. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 22nd chapter. Glory, Glory to, to you, you O Lord. Lord. When the hour came, he took his place at the table and the apostles with him. He said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer, for I tell you, I will not eat it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he said, Take this and divide it among yourselves, for I tell you that from now on I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. Then he took a loaf of bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And he did the same with the cup after supper, saying, This cup that is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to, to you, you, O Christ. Christ. If I can have the children come forward stand plenty plenty apart here go ahead and spread out here how's it going bud good all right can you come over here Raven awesome we'll have to spread out a little bit make sure we're good to go right all right here now you can hear me a little better I bet all right so have you guys ever seen or played with a yo-yo yeah, yeah, yeah. I try. I'm not very good at it. But what does a yo-yo do? 
it goes up and down. Absolutely. So we all have our ups and downs every day too, right? Sometimes we're happy. Sometimes we're sad. Sometimes we're angry. Sometimes we're not. Okay, so we all have those ups and downs too. And in today's lesson, we're going to talk about Hafera. He, he had a lot of ups and downs. Would you agree? Yeah, he had a lot of ups and downs. And we're going to talk about how he chose not to listen to God, and God gave him a lot of chances. He gave him a lot, a lot of chances. And so uh, God sent Moses to talk to him, to try to free his people. Now, God made a promise. Do you remember God's promise? He was going to free his people. And what have we talked about with God's promises? Does he keep them? Yes, always, absolutely. He always keeps his promises. So Moses went to Pharaoh and said, let God's people go. Otherwise, he's going to send these plagues. Do you think that uh, Pharaoh listened? No. So what happened? He sent, God sent some plagues, didn't he? Right? So God sent frogs. Other times he sent gnats, flies. Okay? He, he sent a lot of things. But every time Pharaoh said, Moses, whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, stop. Have God stop this. I'll, I'll let your people go. I'll let the people go. And then he got this really hard heart each time. Do you know what a hard heart is? Have you ever had a hard heart? Yeah? I have too. Okay? A hard heart is where we, we sometimes just do, we want to do it our way. We don't want to listen to what God says we're supposed to do. And so we want to do it our way. And Pharaoh had a really hard heart. So you know what God said with, for his final plague was? Tell Pharaoh that, <laughs> this, is, this is a big one, every firstborn son is going to die. Every firstborn son is going to die. Now, do you think Pharaoh believed him? I mean, he hadn't believed it when he sent all this other stuff. Do you think he believed him this time? No. No, he didn't. And so he didn't let the people go. And God warned him. Now, he also told his people, take your lamb, eat it, and from the blood, mark your house on the outside. What does that mean? What is the marking for? Anybody know? Okay, God was going to pass over. So that was the sign that says, we're listening, we're hearing you, we're following you, God. Okay, so he passed over those houses, and nothing bad happened to those houses. So that's what happened for God's final plague. After that, do you think Pharaoh listened? He did. He finally listened, and he let the people go. All right? So God cares for us just like he cared for his people back then. He cares for us just as much today as he does then. He, it, that doesn't change. Just like his promises never change. And we too have our ups and downs. We talked about that before, right? Sometimes we're crabby. We don't listen to our parents, especially in those mornings when we got to get ready for school, right? And there's a big yawn there right now. You hear me, right? Yeah, exactly. Sometimes we have our ups and downs. And the most important thing to remember is that God is here and cares for us each and every up and each and every down. He sent his son, Jesus, to die on the cross for our downs. So when we make mistakes, he sent his son to the cross for us. That's pretty amazing, isn't it? Yeah, we need to make sure that we're thanking God each and every day for that gift. So if you would bow your head, close your eyes, hold your hands. We're going to go ahead and pray. Dear God, we know that some of the things we do do not please you. We are thankful for Jesus who sets us free from our sin. Amen. Well, thanks for coming up. You can go sit down. Got my sermon in the printer. <laughs> I, I guess I could have stood up here and just gone on for 10 minutes, but I'm not sure how edifying it would have been. 
In a 1989 interview, the late, great, Lutheran-turned-Orthodox convert, church historian, Yaroslav Pelikan elaborated on a lecture he gave titled, The Vindication of Tradition. Tradition is the living faith of the dead. Traditionalism is the dead faith of the living. Tradition lives in conversation with the past while remembering where we are and when we are, and that it is we who have to decide. Traditionalism supposes that nothing should ever be done for the first time, so all that is needed to solve any problem is to arrive at the supposedly unanimous testimony of this homogenized tradition. Every family, every congregation, every community is steeped in tradition. Sports teams have their own rituals. Without tradition, we don't know who we are, after all, or where we come from. There's no solid base to build on without tradition. Traditionalism, however, as Pelican describes it, is pretty much idolatry. It's the worship of tradition for its own sake. And too often this does happen to tradition. Like every other good thing, we tend to take every other good thing and turn it into an idol. Like great music or a good preacher. <clears throat> it's little wonder that tradition gets a bad rap sometimes, isn't it? Because we often associate tradition with stuffiness and rigidity and snootiness, inflexibility, all these things. It's sad that tradition devolves into traditionalism because without tradition we can't be Lutheran, let alone Christian. We're rooted in a tradition thousands of years old, dating back to that prehistory when God told Abraham to leave his comfortable life to travel to a new land. As we travel through the scriptures, this cycle of the narrative lectionary, we remember the great tradition that we are part of, not for its own sake, but so we can remember what God has done for us and for our ancestors in faith. We remember in the tradition how God saved God's people time and time again up to the present day. And one of those parts of the tradition comes to us today in Exodus, in the instructions for the Passover meal. Have any of you been fortunate enough to attend a real Passover meal with real Jews? It's quite an experience if you ever get that opportunity because you'll understand how powerful of a tradition it is. It's a living tradition. Why is this night different from all other nights, goes one question. And what follows over the course of the meal is an enacted retelling of God's salvation in the exodus from Egypt. It's not a story without problems, as our reading makes clear, and as you just heard in the children's sermon. Many innocent firstborn, humans and animals, animals too, are killed as part of this divine rescue story, not to mention all of Abraham's, uh, not Abra all of Pharaoh's army is drowned in the Red Sea. In fact, there is a midrash on this. I believe it's in the Tal Talmud. The, the commentary, Jewish commentary on the scriptures, in which God rebukes the angels for celebrating over the destruction of Pharaoh's army. Because those are, those are God's creatures too. Problematic narratives and all, though, the story is part of the history of the people of Israel, and by faith, it is also part of our history. It's part of our tradition. Here's another beautiful thing about the Passover tradition for us Christians. Look at the gospel reading from Luke. Jesus and his disciples are thoroughly Jewish. They're steeped in the tradition of their ancestors. That night before Jesus' arrest, they celebrate the Passover meal in style in a furnished upper room. However, notice what Jesus does. He doesn't abandon the tradition. He builds upon it. 
on that night when the Jewish people remembered their salvation by God from a slavery in Egypt under a tyrant who claimed to be a god. Jesus institutes a new covenant where God saves all people, all people from the demonic powers of this world who, like Pharaoh, also claim to be ultimate over our lives. Through this little bit of bread and wine, Jesus gives himself to us and for us. God, the only one who can claim ultimacy over anything or anyone, becomes human in Christ, dies and rises for the life of the world. That tradition, Holy Communion, is also a living tradition. And true, traditionalism has reared its ugly head around it, like everything else we do in worship. Practices regarding what kind of bread or wine you got to use. Do you have to use Mogan David, or can you use something else? How often to celebrate it? How exactly Jesus is present in it, and the like, are not nearly as important as the living tradition it represents. It's a tradition that's been passed on through the ages with one core message, there's one core message in this sacrament. God loves you so much that God continues to give himself to you in this bread and in this cup. That sort of tradition is at the essence of who we are as Christians. We might think about tradition in a similar way to the Lutheran reformers. The, Lutherans, the early Lutherans did not throw out everything from the Roman church. They used this criteria. If a tradition proclaims the gospel of Jesus Christ, crucified and risen for the life of the world, it's worth keeping and cherishing. If it is done simply for its own sake, it's worth re-examining. If you don't know the significance of something we do up here, or why, please ask. There's, there's a point to what we do. Just as there was a point to everything done in the Passover ritual. Notice how elaborate the preparations are. You know, detail-oriented people love this. Because it's very, it's very precise. It's clear. There's a purpose for everything prescribed. It's to remember how God brought them out of Egypt. How it was to be on the run that night. Roasted lamb, that's how you cook on the trail. Unleavened bread, you don't have time for the bread to rise. Eating hurriedly with a staff in hand and a girded tunic, got to be ready to go. It's all about remembering God's salvific act. That's what all of this points to. That's what all we do as people of God is supposed to reflect. That's what a living tradition does. It helps us remember what God has done so that we know who we are and who God has called us to be. That's what living tradition, gifted by God, has done for all children of Abraham throughout the earth. Let us pray. Lord God, you have given us the gift of tradition to help us remember who we are and who you have called us to be. Save us from rigid traditionalism. Give us discerning minds and hearts to understand what proclaims your saving word. Amen.
body of our Savior, Jesus Christ, died for you. Eat and remember the wounds that heal the death that brings us life. Pay the price to make us one. So we share in this bread of life. And we drink of your sacrifice as a sign of our bonds of love around the table of the King. The blood that cleanses every sin So with thankfulness and faith we rise to respond and to remember our call to follow in the steps of Christ as his body here on earth. As we share in his suffering, we proclaim Christ will come again and will join in the feast of him around the table of the King. may stand. We confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. With the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, let us pray for the church, those in need, and all of God's creation. We pray for the universal church, for the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America, and the Northwest Minnesota Synod, for our bishops, Elizabeth and Bill, for our staff, David, Ruth, and Amber, Send your Holy Spirit to guide them in their ministry. We pray for your guidance upon the witness and work of Shalom, Shalom's Congregation Council as they work for your kingdom. Send your spirit to be with every congregation in all ages, that they may serve you and your people. Almighty God, hear our prayer. You claim us powerfully as your own and set your mark of mercy upon us in the promise of our baptism. 
May we respond in gratitude and truly live as redeemed and beloved children. Almighty God, for innocent victims and those caught in the crossfire of conflict, we pray for your comfort, healing, and protection, O Lord. Help all who deal with traumatic memories and difficult histories to find renewal and a way forward. Almighty God, hear our prayer. On this commemoration of St. Francis of Assisi, help us to cherish and protect the diverse and countless creatures which populate the earth, as well as the lands, seas, and habitats in which they live. Guide us to take a responsible place as one species among many who share the planet. Almighty God, hear our prayer. For all who still suffer in modern day slavery, give your support and healing and assist the efforts of all who work to abolish these inhumane practices. Be also with those who are in need of your Holy Spirit's power. We remember during this time of struggle around the world all those affected by COVID-19, those who are ill and those who are taking care of them, those who are economically struggling, and those who are providing leadership, counsel, and comfort. We lift up especially today the president, his family, and his staff, Ray, Tom, Ray, Jim, Skip, Norm, Phyllis, Arlene, Lisa, Vi, Faith, Clark, Doris, Shirley, Megan, Silas, Audrey, Sharon, Lavon, and Tom. We also remember these people in our hearts, silently or out loud. Almighty God, hear our prayer. We rejoice for the life of Theodore Fliedner founder of Deaconess Training, and all who value sacred service. Inspire us each to offer ourselves wherever we can, in whatever ways we can. Almighty God, we thank you for watching over our Shalom family while we have been apart these last few months. Thank you for bringing us back to worship you in this beautiful sanctuary. Continue to protect us as we continue to worship and praise you together. Almighty God, hear our prayer. We pray for our nation in this time of great turmoil. Grant healing as to those who are suffering from disaster. Grant uh, to, the, to all leaders who are ill with COVID. We pray for, for healing, comfort, for your spirit of peace to descend upon this land. Almighty God, hear our prayer. We belong to you, O God, and trust that you will answer our prayers in, a, in the way that fulfills your will for the sake of your son, Jesus, the anointed one. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you again so much for continuing to support the mission and ministry of Shalom in this very trying time. You are a blessing to us, to our community, and to our world. Uh, remember that there are th three other ways you can give. I believe there's, there are baskets in the, there's a basket right there in the back for those of you in attendance today. Otherwise, you may send your offering by mail, set up an automatic bank transfer, or use Give Plus on your phone. If you have questions about these, please let the office know. Walk in love as Christ loved us, who gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God.
You may stand. Let us pray. Almighty God, you do not demand sacrifices of blood, but the offerings of our hearts and lives. Receive and bless these gifts, which we offer in response to all that you have freely given, and use them for your highest purposes in this kingdom on earth. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God of power and, power and might, heaven, heaven and, and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on us and given your only begotten Son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. We give you thanks for the redemption you have prepared for us through Jesus Christ. Send your Holy Spirit into our hearts to establish in us a living faith and prepare us joyfully to receive our Redeemer who comes to us in his body and blood. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For, for the, the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and, and the glory are yours, now, now and forever. forever. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. As you take this sacrament, remember that it is the body and blood of Christ given and shed for you. You may be seated. Lamb of God, you take, take away the, the sin of the world. world. Have, Have mercy on us. Lamb, Lamb of God, God you, you take, take away the, the sin of the world. world. Have, Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take, take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. peace.
stand. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, you, you provide the true bread from heaven, your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Grant that we who have received the sacrament of his body and blood may abide in him and, and he in, in us, that, that we may be filled with the power of his endless life, now and forever. Amen. So Pastor talked about how everything we do up here has a reason. Every song that we pick has a reason. It goes with scriptures. Today the scripture talked about the Passover, a command. The first Last Supper, a command. This song is another two commands from Scripture from Jesus. The first one being the Great Commission. Go make disciples, and lo, I am with you always, right? End of Matthew. The second one is to be the salt of the earth, be the light on the city on the hill. This is a picture of the hill Mount Tabor in Israel. It was in Jesus' backyard in Galilee. He saw it all his life. This was used as a signal hill. You know when they had the beacons, the lighted fires, if there was danger or something was going on, they lit the fire on the top of the hill. This is one of the mountains that they used. Can you imagine? This one you could see probably from 50 miles away. It was amazing where we were anywhere in that vicinity and we could see Mount Tabor and recognize it. So as you're singing, be a city on a hill, I want you to think about Mount Tabor and being the beacon on the top of that hill. Oh, and we want kids to come up or anybody who wants to play along with us. We got instruments out, so come on and play with us. Oh, 
The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. Go oh, make disciples, baptizing them.